Oh! Oh, shit. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. It's recording. Oh, God. Wait, how do I edit this? Oh, shit. I think it's too late. Oh, man. I'm, I'm getting too old for this. I'm just gonna keep it going. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm back once again with another Dragon Ball Fighter Z Let's Play. Episode 3. And this time, I'll be showcasing my skills with... Team Gohan, Gotenks, and my favorite, Piccolo. Oh boy. I had so much to talk about in the last two episodes that now I'm kind of starting to wonder if there's anything I can talk about left. If there's anything left I can talk about. You know, that's bullshit. Because I always have something to bring up, something to talk about. Oh my god. So... Holy shit. I picked the easier ladder this time just because this is my first time ever playing as Teen Gohan. And I gotta be honest, he's he's not as I guess versatile as his as his adolescent counterpart. Because I'm I'm maybe it's just because I'm so used to playing as Ultimate Gohan in the story mode. Because, you know, obviously Teen Gohan's not in the story mode because he's not a fucking teen anymore <laughs> so I guess that would make more sense but you know he's such a popular character well at least that variation of Gohan is incredibly popular with Dragon Ball Z fans so they were like fuck it let's just include him in the game because people are going to be begging to play as him and they're absolutely right <laughs> but yeah, this is definitely my first my first time ever playing as him. Like even I didn't even play as him when this game had originally came out, so I'm doing my best to not look so sluggish, even though I'm pretty sure I'm gonna look that way. As I'm as this playthrough goes on, but who fucking cares man? I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best and that's I think that's all that matters. So I'm still trying to adjust to like doing my first ever let's play because I'm not really used to doing commentary on every single video I do. And I think I've only done commentary in like two different instances in the last year. And those were both for combat pack characters for Mortal Kombat 11. Like I, I did a commentary with um, Terminator and I did one with Shiva. So, I guess, but those weren't, you know, consistent because I wasn't, I wasn't streaming MK11, you know, I guess full time, <laughs> that's how you want to put it. So, you know, just trying to think of shit to talk about while I'm playing this on, I guess, twice a week basis. It does be it does get a little difficult, I will admit. But hey, you know I'm here. There's, there probably is a couple things I want to get off my chest. Maybe there isn't. Maybe there isn't. But who cares, bro? I'm here to enjoy myself. I'm here to keep this creative flow going. And I think so far I'm doing a I'm doing a pretty decent job at that. Because, I don't know if I've told you guys this before, but, you know, prior to 2017, I used to have the worst writer's block phase of my life. Like, I want to say right out of high school, which was four, no, six years ago. Like, right out of high school, up until 2017, like, I had the worst writer's block phase of my life. Like, there was only one major project I did in high school, and it was it was a commercial for my economics class. Well, I mean, it wasn't a professional commercial, because, you know, I'm, I'm a fucking high school student. I can't afford Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, so I had to use something as basic as fucking Windows Movie Maker. So after that, you know, I didn't, I couldn't come up with anything. I had severe writer's luck. And I say from... 
2014 up until 2017 because I'm not counting gaming streams. I can play a fucking game and talk over it and call it art, but it's not art. It's just me playing a fucking video game. So, yeah, that was definitely the worst, the worst um, writer's block phase I'd ever gone through. Like, I was so down in the dirt with creativity. I couldn't think of anything to film, to write. So literally my only saving grace was the Mortal Kombat X playthroughs that I did in 2015, like upon release of the game. And those were fun. I did a few commentaries, so. You know, you, you heard me every once in a while, but it wasn't that often. And even then, I was still down in the dirt with creativity. I had zero ideas to do anything. I had zero ideas to put down on paper, to film. And you know, I didn't even have a film crew. Because, you know, after high school, you know, you and the people you used to hang out with are, are either not friends or you just don't see each other that often anymore. And I did have, I did have a little bit of a film crew back in the day, but now not so much. I'm lucky if I even have somebody to hold the camera for me. So you can imagine just how that, how that is. And I say 2017 because anybody who follows me on my main channel, that was when I made my first major short film. My first ever short film. It was probably the biggest project I had ever done. And unsurprisingly enough, it was for a filmmaking class I did in college. Because obviously I was, well, not obviously, because a, a lot of you may not know, but I went to school for filmmaking. So that was a key course during my, during my tenure in college. So making that film really brought back the creative spark because, you know, obviously you have to learn how to write a script. Even though it was like five pages because there's no fucking way you can turn a hundred page screenplay into an eight, ten minute short film. That's just what, that just wasn't going to work or it just wasn't going to happen, period. So I say 2017 because that was when there's always help. My first ever big project. That was the first project that I ever put out. And afterwards, you know, when I got the critique from my professor, critique from my friends, I hyped this up so fucking much after I completed it in college. Because there was absolutely no fucking way I was going to learn all this shit. Because I, like I said, you know, I had to learn how to write a short script. I had to learn how to use Windows Movie Maker. Not when fuck no. I had to learn how to use Final Cut Pro. Cause that was what we used at that at that college was Final Cut Pro. That was like That was like the go to basic tool for filmmaking at this school that I went to. So I had to learn how to use that. And then you know not only was I acting in it, I directed it. I produced it. Edited it. I did all this shit. And I did have a co-star in the project, but you know they were just they were just a helping hand. They didn't, they didn't do any of the editing with me because you know they weren't studying with me. They just they just helped out, and I and I'm more than grateful for that. But after that, you know I had so many ideas for filming. I I had so much shit to come up with like that, that like that following year, or actually the following months. Like, I started doing review vlogs, I started doing top tens, I started doing fucking game reviews, like... You would've never caught me doing this shit... ...prior to 2017, because I was so fucking burned out... ...on creativity, so... There was no fucking way I would've ever come up with this shit... ...before 2017. Like, I kept the fucking engine going after that major project. I was like, you know what? I gotta keep doing this. I gotta keep fucking doing this. And I did. You know, post-2017, I'm doing fucking game reviews on Fighter Z, Seven Deadly Sins, Knights of Britannia. I, I did so many fucking reviews that year that, like, you know, it's cool that not many people watch them. 
but, you know, I wanted to get my pieces out there. I wanted to tell people how I felt about these these pieces that I, I was reviewing. Because, you know, spring 2018, I took another editing class, and I took a screenwriting class, and I took another acting class, and a, and a theater a theater class. Like, I, I took so much shit spring 2018 that my fucking creativity was through the roof. My energy for filmmaking, my energy for just being a fucking artist in general just went through the roof. And I was so fucking happy because this is the shit I fucking dreamed of doing in middle and high school. That I didn't get much of a chance to do because, number one, I had the shittiest software to work with back then. Number two, nobody fucking liked me. <laughs> what am I kidding? Nobody still likes me, so nothing's changed. <laughs> and... Number three, I just didn't have shit to review because my taste was so fucking narrow and bland compared to now. That like, yo, can you fucking believe I'm doing top ten, top five albums of the year? Top five video games, top five movies? Like, you would have never suspected me to do that shit before 2017. Absolutely not. Now you see me doing this shit and you're like, man, this guy is... <laughs> This guy's fucking full of it. He, he's got the adrenaline pumping. You're goddamn right I do because I'm not gonna fucking stop for nothing. 2018 was like the first official year that I did all this shit. Some people watched, some people didn't. That's fucking cool. But I like to get these creative ideas out because if I don't do them now. I will eventually lose that spark. And when you lose that creative spark, you're down for months, years maybe. And I was definitely down for years. So, and then 2019 was when I first introduced Minimal Effort Sketch. And some people were huge fans of that. Some were just, okay, this is cool. And then there were some that were just like, why the fuck are you doing this? Are you seriously so low in the dumps that you have to fucking do this? And you know what? Cool. I'm glad that's what you think. But I fucking love doing this shit. And another reason I introduced Minimal Effort Sketch was because I wanted to work on my editing. I wanted to try to work with time lapse. I wanted to improve my art skills a little bit. And I think of, I think thanks to my drawing class in fall 2018, I feel like I've improved on my drawing. Cause I was so fucking low on confidence when it came to hands-on crafting and art skills. Like there was no fucking way I would have ever dreamt of making decent drawings. So there's that. And just you know, like it's like getting two. <laughs> I'm about to pull a fucking Ricky from Trailer Park Boys and say getting two birds stoned at once. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Yes, I'm getting two birds stoned at once, you know, drawing the shit, filming it, and editing it in time-lapse fashion. But, well, the second and third points kind of go hand in hand, so I guess it's still two birds? You get the idea. It was a really fun concept. I don't think I did any other- actually, I did do a couple other reviews in last year, pretty much. Um, Resident Evil 2, the remake, and Devil May Cry 5, Mortal Kombat 11 as well. I did do reviews on those. We didn't get too much aspect recognition though, so that was kind of trash. But I liked them. I thought I put them together nicely. And I, like I said, I think that's all that matters. So. And even to this day, I still have that creative flow going. Maybe not as much this year, because, you know, I've been trying to get busy with my life, so. But yeah, you know, review vlogs, major projects, minimal effort sketch, fucking Let's Plays, like, who would have thought I'd be doing a fucking Let's Play? <laughs> who cares, man? I'm enjoying it. And I hope you guys are too, because 
I mean, I do this partly for you guys, but mostly for me. Because, you know, even if I'm not hands-on with anything right now, this is how I get the... This is how I get keep that creative flow going. This is how I get my ideas out. So, wow, this was really fun. Here I am thinking I didn't have anything to talk about. Meanwhile, I got like all sorts of shit to bring up to fucking spout on this microphone. <laughs> I really hope you guys enjoyed because this is definitely far from over. Please subscribe because I'm doing this twice a week. So, thanks. Bye.